Kamakshya temple here. So this is the only temple where uh, you know puja happens till date and is not destroyed by the invaders. And uh, you know like we had uh, explored the uh, place here, most of the places were destroyed. But this place was not destroyed for a reason that I would inform in a short while. So let's go explore this place now. This Shiva temple is said to be built during the early 7th century, but the entire structure that we see today was expanded subsequently between the 14th and the 16th century during the rule of Krishnadeva Raya, Chalukyas and the Hoysalas thereafter. The destruction of Hampi city in 1565 is said to have taken about 6 months to ransack the entire place. The local people in Hampi had informed that this is the only temple where the main deity was not damaged and that the external damage that was done was reconstructed later. It is believed that this temple was possibly not destroyed because Lord Shiva is said to be a deity who didn't live with grandeur and wealth. In comparison to Lord Vishnu who is called as Alangara Priya which means someone who loved being dressed and decorated with jewels and fineries. Since most of the wealth and money was found in most of the Vishnu temples back then, it is believed that this temple most probably was not dug up because the invader had much concentrated on the Vishnu temples where most of the wealth was found. So we are done with the uh, Virupaksha temple right now and we would be heading to the Vitala temple next. So I would go check out from the uh, you know hotel and uh, reach the Vitala temple. I will get the uh, details explained to you after reaching the place. that you see behind me these uh, temples are actually ancient uh, Jain temples which were built somewhere around the 6th or 7th century so this is right next to the uh, you know Virupaksha temple so uh, if you come out of the Virupaksha temple you have a signboard that says uh, you know that uh, there, there is a bunch of stairs that you have to climb it says that it would lead you to a Saswekal Ganesha temple and the other uh, you know uh, temples here so if you just walk up the uh, place and take a right you would be able to reach this place and uh, this place is actually the Jain temples that were built uh, many centuries before so uh, you know I was actually about to miss this place I thought it uh, it is probably the same thing but no once I uh, you know just came up here I realized that this is a completely different place so that is the Jain temple this entire uh, you know, place here is a Jain temple and if you walk up there uh, you know you would be able to find uh, the Saswe Kal Ganesha and the Kadle Kal Ganesha temple which uh, we had explored yesterday and uh, you can also uh, you know reach the viewpoint uh, you know uh, from here so if you walk up this place you would be able to reach the viewpoint and apart from that this place is the uh, Jain temple that we built uh, many centuries ago so guys, we finished visiting the uh, you know Virupakshi temple and also uh, you know found the place that leads to Saswekal Ganesha and the Kadlekal Ganesha temple and uh, the Jain temples right next to the temple. So now that we are on our way back here, uh, you know we actually have the Hampi Bazaar. This particular temple, the Virupakshi temple, is near to the Hampi Bazaar. 
So if you see behind me, these structures that is right behind me and these complexes that you can see were all, uh, you know, diamond market and gold market is what I was informed. So this particular kingdom, as I had informed in my previous vlogs, uh, was one of the most, uh, you know, prosperous kingdom here. And uh, it was said that, uh, you know, uh, most of the uh, precious stones and gems were actually sold on the road for common people to buy and uh, they were quite uh, you know good in trading and uh, you know there used to be people far and wide from different kingdoms who used to come here for trade and sell their goods uh, you know for uh, in this particular place the Hampi Bazaar After the Virupaksha temple, we drove to the Vijayavatala temple, which is one of the famous tourist attractions here in Hampi. The Vijayavatala temple is not directly reachable using a private vehicle. So after we reached the place, we had parked our car and had taken a buggy that's available in the parking lot to reach the temple. There are many ancient ruins even on the way to the temple from the parking lot. The buggy costs you about 40 to 50 rupees from the parking and you can use the same ticket to reach back the parking from the temple. Guys, we finally reached the uh, Vijaya Vitala temple here and uh, I actually have uh, hired a guide here to explain about the different paths here. So that's the guide and uh, you know it seems there are many places here and this it seems is the main temple uh, you know uh, tourist attraction here. So we would go inside uh, if you see here right in the temple premises you actually have a place where you can uh, you know uh, buy your tickets so there is another monument where uh, you will have to be buying uh, a ticket so that ticket is actually valid here also so you would be able to see two places in case you buy this ticket for 40 rupees so uh, and it is valid for one day so the places that you can visit is uh, this uh, Vijayavitala temple and the Lotus Mahal you would be able to uh, you know visit using the same temple for the same day So guys, we have finally reached the Hampi uh, stone chariot here inside the Vitala temple. This is actually a symbol of Hampi is what I was told. And currently, uh, you know, this is also a part of the 50 rupees note that you can see. Behind the 15 rupees note, the structure that has been printed is this particular chariot. It is told that this particular structure was built in the 16th century by Krishnadeva Raya uh, here. It's 
it it is actually a symbol of uh, his victory uh, with the king of Orissa, Gajendra Nath is what I was told or something like that. I would just mention just in case it is wrong. So this was actually the victory of his war against the Orissa king. And uh, this, uh, you know, after the war, he was married to the daughter of uh, the king of Orissa. And uh, she was a third wife of Krishna Devaraya. And as a symbol of his victory, he, bought, he, he actually had visited the uh, temple there. It is said that after the wedding, they uh, had to visit a temple and the uh, king was asked to visit the uh, Konak temple in uh, Orissa. So when he had visited uh, the Konak temple, he was so impressed by that particular structure that he wanted to, uh, you know, replicate it and make it a symbol of his victory here in Karnataka, which is why he had made this structure here. So it is told that this particular structure is not a single stone structure. It has four, uh, you know, uh, stones that has been laid to make this particular, uh, you know, uh, chariot here and it has about 24 layers to complete this particular structure. So we would explore this, uh, you know, we would be exploring more places here. So let's get started. This temple is said to be dedicated to Lord Vishnu named as Vitala and is said to have been one of the most grandest and the most creatively artistic temple in its time. This temple is said to have had an idol of Lord Vitala, which is believed to have been transported from Hampi to Pandaripura in order to avoid any sort of a damage from the invaders. It is believed that the Vitala idol that was taken from Hampi to Pandaripura is being worshipped till late and there are sacred offerings that happens even today. tree is about 150 years old and uh, it has white and yellow colored flowers and uh, it, I was told that this is a flower that is uh, you know quite dedicatedly used to pray for Lord Shiva 
so this particular tree here is at least uh, you know it's quite old 150 years old and stays strong even till date ಇದೆಲ್ಲಾ ಮುಂಚೆ ಇದರ ಮುಂಚಿನ ಹೆಸರು ಆಗಿತ್ತು ಕಿಷ್ಕಿಂದ ನಗರಿ ಆಗಿತ್ತು ಇದೆಲ್ಲ ಸೊ ಆಗ ವಾಲಿ ಸುಗ್ರೀವರ ರಾಜಧಾನ ಆಗಿತ್ತು ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ನೀವು ಸಾಕ್ಷಿಯಾಗಿ ಹನುಮಂತನ ಜನ್ಮಸ್ಥಳ ಕೂಡ ನೀವು ಕಾಣಬಹುದು ಅಂಜನಾದ್ರಿ ಪರ್ವತ ಅಂತಂದೇಳಿ ಹನುಮಂತನ ಜನ್ಮಸ್ಥಳ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ತೀವಿ ಇದೆಲ್ಲ ಕಾಣಬಹುದು ಮೇಲೆ ವೈಟ್ ದೇವಸ್ಥಾನವನ್ನು ಕಾಣ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದಾರೆ ಮೇಡಮ್ ಅದರ ಕೆಳಭಾಗದಲ್ಲಿ ನಿಮಗೆ ದೊಡ್ಡದಾದ ಒಂದು ಕಲ್ಲು ಕಾಣ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಅದು ಹನುಮಂತನ ಮುಖ ಆಕಾರದಲ್ಲಿ ಕಾಣ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ನಿಮಗೆ Uh, we have seen these kind of uh, you know empty structures everywhere uh, you know telling that these were the bazaars that were a part of this kingdom so here is actually the entire structure as to how it might have been in those days so uh, you know it actually has a roof on top and uh, the pillars and on top of that uh, it seems uh, you know it actually leads to the residents of those traders who used to uh, you know do business in these places and i was also informed that traders from far and wide portugal france and all the other traders used to come to this place uh, to buy goods and since it was bata system in those days uh, they actually had uh, you know they they would have uh, goods uh, traded so it's not minted money uh they would uh, you know get gold diamond silver and the other uh, you know things in their uh, uh place where whatever they get and uh, they would be taking uh, all the spices and the other uh, uh, you know things from india to their uh, place so possibly that is the actual structure that you can see behind me uh, you know to have a fair idea as to how these bazaars uh, around hampi would have been of today's video and hope you guys like the information the details about the ticket information and other entry costs is provided in the description box below if you like my video do consider sharing liking and subscribing to my channel and also do comment about your experiences in this place and also your plan to visit the place so until next time stay tuned stay safe